everybody, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com, and in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. Now, this is one of those very special songs that is just the same three chords the same way the entire time. You know, a lot of the time there'll be a three chord song, but the order keeps changing or some catch, you know, but in this one, same three chords in the same three order, just B minor, A, and then two measures of E over and over again for the entire song. Now, the catch is one of those chords is a bar chord. And if you're working on bar chords, this is an awesome song for that because you get to play one bar chord and then you get a chance to chill out on some open chords. But if you're not ready for bar chords or you're not quite into, you know, putting the work into that at this point in your guitar career, which is fine, I've also figured out a really simple way to play this song using a capo on the second fret that lets us use three really simple chords, G, A minor, and D. You might notice the table of contents, you know, that way you can just skip around and figure out whichever way that you want to play this. If you want to play it with the bar chord, you can do that. If you want to play it with the easy chords, you can do that too. But first we're going to start off with the strumming pattern, which you'll need no matter which way you're going to be playing this song. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to be playing an E major chord right now. The strumming pattern goes like this. I'll do it a bit slower. And you might recognize that as the most common strumming pattern in the universe. Down, down, up, up, down, up. You might already be familiar with it, but if you're not, I have a whole bunch of resources dedicated to helping you with it. There's a bunch of links to that stuff down below, like my free ebook and everything. But let's just work on it a bit ourselves right now. On my E major chord here, we're gonna break this thing up into two halves. The first half is really simple, just down, down, up. Not too bad. And then we can learn the second half, which goes miss up, down, up. So we miss the strings on beat three, and then we go up, down, up, like this. One, two, miss up, down, up. One, two, miss up, down, up. And I want you to try it just like I'm doing, counting one, two, out loud, saying miss out loud. One, Two miss. One, two, miss. I'm doing that a thousand times. And once you have the first half and the second half down separately, we can put it all together super slowly, just going three, four, down, down, up, miss, up, down, 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 down up, miss. And something that I've been trying with my real life students lately when they're having trouble getting strumming patterns that I've found has been working quite well is learning to say the pattern first. Like don't even let yourself touch the guitar. First you want to memorize just saying it, just going down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, and just saying it rhythmically like that over and over. Because once you can say it, you'll kind of be able to like remind your arm, you know, you're telling your arm, go down. Down, down, up, miss, up, down. And your arm will just follow the instructions. So please take a look at those strategies if you're having any issue with this strumming pattern. And also check out my resources because I go, you know, way more in depth than like the two minutes that we spent doing it right here. Anyways, once you have that strumming pattern, at least the motions of it going, we can add a groove to it. Now this is kind of taking it to the next level and it's taking it from just being a bunch of motions to being like a real rhythm that sounds like the song. Cause you know, you might have asked like, how come this song and like a thousand or hundreds of thousands of other songs all use the same strumming pattern, sometimes even the same chords, yet they sound different. And it's because the groove is different and it takes this, and turns it into this. The difference is subtle, but it definitely, once you add the chord shapes and you play through the song, it does make a huge difference. You know, we don't have to get super complicated. All we really have to do is accent the and of two. So the first up stroke in the whole pattern, you know, down, down, up, up, down. You just make it a bit louder. So 
so just try that super duper slowly, getting that first upstroke to have a bit more oomph in it, and that makes the song sound a lot more like the original recording. And now that we have our strumming pattern, let's add some chords to this. First, we'll take a look at the chords for the original version using that B minor bar chord. That's our first shape, B minor. And this shape actually comes from the A minor chord. If we play it with these three fingers, saving our first finger, we go up one, two times, and then we can bar the second fret. You might have to lower your thumb to bar it. If your thumb is too high, you're like, I ain't gonna work. Thumb's too low, you're gonna break your wrist. You want your thumb somewhere on the middle, so you can lay your finger out nice and flat and use kind of like the side of your finger. You don't want to use that bit. That bit's too soft. The side here, when you curve your finger a little bit, it's nice and hard and rigid. Definitely makes it a lot easier to press down. You can see that, hopefully. And if you need more help with bar chords, I have a course that like takes you from the easiest things you can do on guitar and it somehow works its way into bar chords very gradually. You know, that was my goal is to make it like a really approachable subject. So you can check out a free preview for that down below. Anyways, we have this bar chord. Try it out. Then we're going to go to an A chord. And I would spend most of my practice time, if I were you, going from B minor to A. At first, just down strokes, you know. Testing out each string at your own pace, and then trying the strumming pattern with it. You can always lift up the chord shape early. Lift on that last upstroke. See, I get some open strings between. It's not desirable, but it's not bad. You don't really notice it once you speed up. So work out that switch, and then all we have left to do, once we're on that A chord, is go to E. And that's the entire chord progression. Just B minor, A, E, E. I recommend also going from E back to B minor, because you know that way you'll be able to loop the progression and play through the whole song. So we have our E chord to B minor tricky switch but you know with enough practice you'll get there now before we can add our strumming pattern to those chords we should practice them using downstrokes only just to you know get the switches going starting off on B minor one two three Now that we have the chord order, we have the strumming pattern, let's just put those two together. Uh, one, two, three, four. Now I want to show you how we can play this song using a capo on the 2nd fret. Just get it on there nice and snug. 
check your strings. Using our capo on the second fret, we can play this song using some really simple chord shapes. Our three shapes are going to be A minor, going to a G chord, going to a D chord. And keep in mind that you don't need the capo, you could just play it without, but you won't be able to play along with the original recording. You know, the capo lifts it so that these chords sound right with the original recording. And once you've worked out those switches, we can practice these chords using downstrokes only, keeping it really simple and just counting along, starting on A minor. One, two, three. And now we can put that together with the strumming pattern that we learned at the beginning of this lesson and we're playing the tune. Starting off on A minor, a uh, one, two, three, four. So here's everything you need to know for this tune. The chord progression, it's obvious, it's just the same thing over and over. We have the chord progression for the regular version and the chord progression for the easy version where you have to have a capo on the second fret. Then it's the same strumming pattern for both. And I thought, just because usually people do ask about the melody at the beginning, um, I'm gonna do a lot more melody stuff next year, 2020. That's gonna be the year of lead guitar for a good guitarist. But um, I thought I'd just include a uh, quick little tab that I wrote up for the first verse and the chorus. So there you go, you can use this to help you practice. Cool, so that's all there is to it. You know, this is a really simple tune, same chords, same order. You can either do it using that bar chord or you can use the capo, make life a bit easier. Now, as far as practicing this song, I think the best way to do it would just be to load up the song right now on YouTube, slow it down. In the bottom corner, there's the settings or if you're on mobile, like you press dot, dot, dot or whatever, and you can slow down the playback speed to like 0.5 or 0.75. And that's really great practice because even if you screw up, you can join back in because it's always just gonna be the same progression over and over again. And that's a wonderful skill to have as a musician is the ability to join back in when you make a mistake. Like a really good musician still makes mistakes. They just know how to cover it up so that you don't notice that they're making any mistakes. You know, that itself is one of the most important skills you can have. So just working with the original recording, this is such an awesome opportunity to practice that B minor bar chord or to practice your switching from A minor to G and all that stuff and to work on the strumming pattern where we accent the beat after two, you know, the and of two. You know, there's so many little things that'll help polish up our playing and bring you to the next level. You know, we can just work on them with the original recording, which is always fun. Aside from that, there's not really too much else to discuss. Um, if you need any extra help, don't forget to check out my resources. You can also ask in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.